Right, so this project has been a long time coming. I built this uh, CNC machine probably back in, I want to say it was around 2008, somewhere around that time. And I used uh, aluminum three quarter inch angle to provide a rail and the ball bearings that ride on it have actually a, a 90 degree groove in it that fits on them. But over time, that surface area um, pushes down on the aluminum and eventually creates these flaps. Well, the problem is on each end, there are no flaps or they're very, very small. And the center, they're pretty wide. So what I need to do is create that angle on the entire length of it. So in order to do this, I made a jig and I am going to uh, take these and run them through. I'm not going to worry as much on the ones on the underside as I am on the ones on the top uh, because the weight does hold this thing down. And uh, so I'm basically going to take that off. I'm going to have to loosen the chain in order to do that. And then I'll have to take the rails out and put a piece and hold it while I do that. So I've never taken this apart since I built this machine. And i uh, not exactly wanting to do this, but I think it's going to provide better results because right now, over the full width, if I'm using a, a V-groove cutter, you can see how on one side it's not as deep as the other. And I really like to even that out. So that is what I'm going to work on. So now we're uh, starting to show time lapse as I pull these rails and chains off. These rails are attached every eh, about six to eight inches along the side with a bolt that goes all the way through a nut on the bottom as you can see as I'm taking them apart. And so I gotta do every one of these in order to be able to slide this piece out from underneath the V-groove bearings. So there is the bottom rail. Lean it against the wall. And now it's just a matter of pulling out this top rail. And I want to put another piece of rail in there take that space up when I do that. So I want to do this. There we are, the rail is out. Now I will take the rail over and put that angle on it. Making this jig is very easy. Take a table saw, turn it to 45 degrees, and I run the 2x4 scrap through. Then I flip it back around and push it right on through, and this cuts out a groove that the angle iron, or in this case aluminum, will actually slide through while it's going through the jig on the drill press to allow everything to stay consistent. And here you can see how the angle aluminum fits into the groove and that will allow it to be held nicely while the grinder cuts into it. So the jig is mounted and I'm using an arbor to hold that grinder disc. I bought all that stuff at Harbor Freight and here it is as I'm sliding it through with my hands, uh, being careful not to uh, touch them into the grinding disc, but you can see how it takes off the edge of that one side of the angle and then I'll end up flipping it around in order to be able to get the other side so that when I uh, mount it back I have a nice 45 degree flats on the angle aluminum. Now for the other flat I take the jig and I adjust it so that the V faces down and I slide it through. This creates the other 45 degree flat on the inside that I need for that V groove bearing to fit on it nicely. And I run it through once, I actually do it a couple times to try to get that flat the right width that I need. And once that's complete, it's on to the next step. Well, everyone loves the sanding portion, and that's what's next. So what I did is I started with 150 grit, and this is all to get out the scratches that the grinding wheel has left on it. So 150 to 220, and then I go to 400. And when I get done with that, I use steel wool to actually polish it until I can really get a mirror finish that uh, I know will look nice and work well. By letting the block rest on each side, I get that perfect angle that I need. Of course, I'm putting a lot more pressure on the outside of that rail. So now I have put those chamfers on the rails. I've sanded them with 150, 200, 400, and then used 
steel wool to make them nice and smooth and now it's time to put everything back. So I'm going to start with this side of the machine because everything was flush with the edge of this wood. I'm going to do that and then I'll do that one next. So I start on here and accidentally push the gantry so you can see me going to the other side and having to come back. And now that I got the rail where I needed to be, I start putting the uh, bolts through and the nuts and tightening them up, but not too tight because I want to adjust them with the straight edge to make sure that they are uh, to the edge and uh, parallel to the board that they're resting on because that's what everything's aligned to. And so this takes a little bit of time and just got to take one at a time until you get it completely finished. And uh, once I'm done, I can switch. All right, now I got to do the other side. Well, I'm not going to show you the other side just because you've already seen it on this and it's really not important to see it all over again. So it's on to fixing the chains. So now that the rails are back on, I need to tighten the chain. And what I do here is the chains are attached to the ends of three inch, quarter inch, um, 20 threads per inch bolts. And I have a nut on each side of this board at the end. And as I hold the screw still and tighten that nut, it provides tension on the chain, which is what I need. And I do that until I feel like the chain is uh, tight enough. Then I'll actually go back and adjust one side versus the other to help uh, skew the gantry so that it is actually perpendicular to the rail. Um, but I'm not going to show you that in this particular video. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video of how I put those chamfers on these aluminum rails to allow for these V bearings to ride along it. It's actually working a lot better and um, polishing it up and with that steel wool really helped smooth that out and it's uh, doing well. So I'm looking forward to working on some projects and not having to worry about how it was cutting uh, deeper in the middle and not so deep on the edge uh, due to the wear. Now if they have a little bit of flat on there, it should last for quite a while without having any issues. Uh, some have said that you should go and use steel rails. Uh, actually, I think the aluminum will be just fine for what I do, but I'm not using this full time like some may. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to probably put linear bearings that I buy from China on here, uh, but that's a lot of money right now, and I really don't have a need to do that, and don't really think that there's a, a good reason to justify the hundreds of dollars to do that. So, hope you liked this video today. If you did, please uh, hit the thumbs up below. Also, uh, subscribe today and you'll see other CNC videos on this channel from time to time. I try to put out a video every two weeks. And uh, put your comments below and I'll see you next time on Wassel Woodworking. Am I still on? What, what's going on? Oh, hey, by the way, if you're still there, click some of these other videos here on the sides. These videos are others that I might find interesting and also subscribe. We'll see you later.